cricket is a simple game for some people, but for some it becomes life, it becomes attitude. Today we're at one of the finest clubs in the southeast region, the Dingley Cricket Club. We're going to be talking to some of their cricket legends to find out how cricket has changed their lives and attitude. I'm now speaking with the curator at the Dingley Cricket Club, Johnny Bishop. Thank you, Johnny, for joining us today. You're welcome. And I hear that there's two different types of pitches in cricket. There's synthetic and there's a turf pitch. And we have a turf pitch here at Dingley Cricket Club. Can you please tell us your role as the curator here at Dingley Cricket Club and what's involved in the maintenance of the pitch? Yeah, that's correct. Synthetic will be very easy. You literally just turn up and play. You know, no marking, no nothing, no preparing. It's just literally a, like a plastic sort of mat. You just put your stumps out and play. Turf, obviously, wickets are totally different. Uh, a lot of time and effort have to go in. Obviously, it's, it's a lot, lot of grass. Um, as a case, obviously, you've got to have it hard. So, at the moment, obviously, uh, the wicket's getting rolled for a match day. Um, and it, the case is, obviously, a lot of water, a lot of rolling. And then, obviously, it probably takes you about an hour to mark the actual pitch itself. So, during the week, you probably hear four, five, six times a week, you know, after the game, putting the water on, cutting it, rolling it, and obviously, Grass is a very particular, you've got to water it, cut it, water, cut it, water, cut it, and obviously the sun over here in Australia obviously is um, what makes it grow. And obviously the more grass you get on a turf wicket, the better. The even coverage um, is what you want, and obviously that helps bat and ball. And uh, how often, uh, before the start of a game, probably on Saturday, so how often during the week probably you have to come and probably water it and roll it? It depends, it's obviously very weather dependent, obviously Monday coming it's going to be 37 degrees so it's a case of the spring will be on for 4, 5, 6 hours, the wicket will be totally underwater and you're thinking what's going to happen here. Um, so it's a case of every week is totally different, you know if you get a week of 30 degrees you've got to water it most days, if it's 20, 15 degrees it's less water. So obviously it's more at the front end of the week, towards the back end of the week you've got to let it dry, you've got to be able to roll it. Obviously, when you roll the wicket, you do need a little bit of moisture in there to compact the soil. Um, so obviously, it's a, it's a, every week's different for here, especially in Australia. It's, it's a really dark soil, and if it's too wet, it sticks to the roller, and then obviously it comes up off the ground. So obviously, it just creates divots into the wicket. So it's a very temperamental sort of environment. You know, too soft, you can actually destroy the wicket. Yep. So you just need that, that little bit of tackiness to be able to roll it and compact it in. Fair enough, fair enough. Can you tell me what else you do as part of your role as a curator? Um, obviously, marking out the um, inner circle. So obviously, in, at the moment now, obviously, we're COVID hitting and out. We're doing our one-day cricket rather than two-day cricket, which obviously makes my life a bit easier as a curator as well. But obviously, there's no two-day games going on there. But obviously, marking out obviously takes a while. It's tape measure. There's all measurements. The umpires do come out and check the, check the measurements. So... You can't really make an error with that because obviously they can contact the league and the game gets forfeited. Obviously there's an inner circle which is a 30 yard circle for one days. That's another aspect that you've got to mark out. And obviously it's a lot of string lines. You know, you, you know, you just got to make sure it all lines up, make sure the stumps are marked and then the umpire sort of takes over. So there's a lot of preparation that people, you see the wicket but obviously on, on the outside of it as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, Johnny. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Thank you. Thank you. I'm now speaking with the captain of the Dingley Cricket Club, Mr. Damien Jordan. Thanks for joining us today, Damien. It's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. I know you guys are busy, so thank you for sparing the time for us. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Damien. Can you please tell us how long you've been captain of the club and what's your experience been like so far? No problems. Well, this is my second year here at Dingley, captaining the uh, first 11. I actually came here five years ago as my son was playing junior cricket and great to be involved with local cricket again. And um, unfortunately, I got injured, so I haven't played that many games. And then the club, uh, the committee painted me with a vision for the next three years about the growth of the club, the local talent, how do we actually make cricket our common voice in the community bring people together, learn about each other's cultures and give, give us a place where we can actually grow and form friendships and have a bit of fun playing the game that we love. And I've been doing that now in the second year and we had a very successful 
first year last year and we're hoping to build on that this season. I have heard that uh, you have some seasonal players coming here in your club from overseas. Um, I haven't heard that uh, this thing is not happening in most of the clubs here. So tell us more about that. Yeah, no worries. Something that I've been around cricket now for 25 years and you know I grew up in a Sri Lankan based cricket club in Clayton and um, it was a, a community where we had different um, diversity of nationalities, a lot of Sri Lankans, a lot of Indians um, in the community. And then in terms of Dingley, it's more of an Anglo-Saxon background, but one of the goals were to, to be able to bring people into the country and not just teach them about cricket, give them some experiences in life. Uh, young kids that are talented, we, we give them a job, um, we, we make them part of our family, we take them out for dinners, we take them out and see the penguins and all those sort of things. So. Um, we've had a couple over the years that I've been here. Um, last year we had two Sri Lankans, okay. one fast bowler, Milan Ratnaika, mm -hmm. who uh, took the bowling out in the competition. Beautiful young man, bowled 135 kilometres, outswingers, um, super talent. There were some language barriers at the start. Um, I'm proud to say he's, he had to go back with COVID a couple of weeks ago, just before Christmas. Um, but the growth that he had, not just as a cricketer, but as a person, he developed uh, the language, his, his English got better, he made some great friends, he learned some other skills, um, he learned how to drive a car. Um, it was fantastic to watch that as a human, not just as a cricketer. And um, we've had guys from England, yeah. you know, they come over very pale skin, very, uh, as soon as an overcast day comes, they're uh, cooking like lobsters here, and the same deal. Um, it's great to be able to integrate so many different um, communities and different backgrounds. Not only do they learn things, we learn things and it helps broaden our horizon as cricketers and as people as well. As a cricketer, do you find any area where Australian cricket team or even local clubs in Australia, we need to do more work, like in terms of batsmen or in terms of spinners, where you think we need um, to do a little bit of more work to become the best team in the world? Yeah, that's a great, que uh, great question. I've played um, a lot of cricket around Victoria in terms of Premier cricket and local cricket. Uh, I think one thing, it's the, the Australian mantra is very strong. They play a hard brand of cricket mm -hmm. and they breed that in the youngsters from an early day. It's that white line fever, it's that never say die attitude. And that can carry you so far. But in terms of skill sets, I think we're seeing the harder wickets in Australia and turf wickets, it's hard to produce those really good spinners. Mm -hmm. um, and and T20 and all the, the shortened version of the game are sort of helping batsmen really swing the bat harder. So again, it's executing the skill. I think one thing that we can really work on here is to be able to visualize what you need to do at the back of your marker. And then it's about executing the skill. Um, whether you're going wide Yorkers, slower bumpers, those things we've got to practice more at training. Um, and then we can execute on the day. And those whoever executes best normally wins. Now, thank you so much for your time. I think it's quite um, helpful information and uh, I can say that Dingley Cricket uh, Club uh, really have a great history and great achievements. Good luck for everything in future. No worries. Thanks for having yes. me again. Nice thank you, Damien. Nice Thanks to meet you too. Okay. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Kai. And you? I'm Tristan. Cricket, it's fun to play with friends and it motivates me because um, I like improving in my game and yeah. That's great. I think that's uh, that's very a motivational thing. That's why a um, lot of uh, local clubs give the opportunity to little boys and girls to come and play so they spend less time on video games. Which are more interesting, video games or playing cricket? Playing cricket. Oh, <laughs> I love playing cricket. Tristan, can you tell me what's your favourite thing about playing cricket? Just having fun. Just love it. It's in the blood. Just and and who's your favourite player? Say Sachin Tandulkar. Um, <laughs> he might not know him. <laughs> I, I love Virat, Virat Kohli. He's probably what he's probably my favourite cricket player. Can you tell me um, your favourite story about your your favourite game that you've ever played? What, like in video games or uh, your oh. your best match? Oh, okay. My best match. Probably when I took six wickets. Six yes. wickets. And which player do you follow? Who do you want to be when you're a big boy? Oh, uh, my favourite player is probably Glenn Maxwell. Oh great! <laughs> and why you like him so much? Oh, uh, just because uh, he's always like he's intent in winning the game and um, he tries his hardest. And he 
never leaves anything in the tank. Thank you so much, boys. I guess so you're getting ready for your uh, practice now. All the best. And now we are with the secretary of Dingley Cricket Club, Mr. Andrew Craig. Andrew, thank you so much for giving your time. You're very welcome at uh, this show, which is uh, Beyond Boundaries. Thanks, MK. It's good to be here. So my first question to you, Andrew, how long you have been with the club and what are your responsibilities as a secretary? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I've been around the club since I was a junior. I played cricket here when I was a kid through to senior cricket now. I joined as secretary on the committee three years ago. So it's my third year now. Uh, I've enjoyed that time so far. The roles with being a secretary is mostly a lot of off-field organisation for the club. So it's the admin work, dealing with the leagues, the councils, the players, the coaches, the captains. It's making sure everything is coordinated so that for our players, it's a seamless uh, opportunity as possible. So then it's not they're not doing work off the field. They're just worrying about playing cricket and we help it out off the field, getting it all organised and ready for them to go. Please tell us a story about a highlight being in the club, whether that was your favourite match or a favourite social function. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I think the highlight for me would have to be last year when our first 11 and second 11 both won the premierships, which is the first time it's happened at the club. So that was a great achievement for everyone to win two flags in our top two grade. And then off, off field, I would say the highlight would probably be the Pink Stumps Day we held last year for the McGrath Foundation. So it was our first time running that event, the social rooms here and the ground was full of supporters coming down to donate to the McGrath Foundation which raises money for breast cancer research and so off the field that was probably the highlight I would say. Awesome thank you. Thank you. And Andrew I have seen that you're providing a lot of facilities to your senior and junior players how you manage the running cost of the club? So to cover them we get a lot of support from the local Dingley community oh, which is good so you can see behind us we have a great list of sponsors yeah. which contribute a lot to the club which helps, helps cover all those fees because we want to try and minimise the cost for our players. So we don't want to burden the players, we just wanted to play cricket to cover those costs. So we try and minimise the fees to the players as much as possible and get support from the community where we can. And we also have a donation program called the Slab Club where you can donate, donate, to the, donate a slab of drinks to the club, which then gets sold, which we make money from to help cover our costs. And if you do that, you go in a drawer to win money and you get your face on social media thanking you for your contribution. Yeah, what sort of drinks are they? Is uh, it the hard drinks or we don't? Yeah, <laughs> you get alcoholic drinks, not alcoholic drinks. Depends and do you drink purpose. them before the match or after the match? Uh, don't, only after the match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's too Thank funny. You. Andrew, can you tell us about where you see the club going in the next five years? Does the club have any plans? Yeah, so it's a very exciting time for the Dingley Cricket Club, I would say. Uh, our facilities here are uh, plan to be redeveloped. So there's six million dollars uh, promised from the government to rebuild this. So we're going to have state-of-the-art facilities here soon for our players and our supporters, which will be great. Thank you so much for your time, Andrew. Thanks a lot, MK. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Andrew. I'm now speaking with the president of the Dingley Cricket Club, Mr. Casey Caldera. Thank you, Casey, for joining us today. Thanks, Peter. It's great to have you guys down at Dingley Cricket Club today. Um, looking forward to it. Thanks, Casey. And can you please tell us how long you've been president of the club for and the history of the club? Yep, so I've been president for two years now. Um, I was vice president before those two years. Um, well, I've been at the club for five years. Um, Dingley Cricket Club's been around since 1958. Um, so we have been around for quite some time. Uh, we've got a really good relationship with the, the Dingley Football Club. And um, yeah, from there, we, we started with about one or two teams back in 1958. Um, over that time, we have grown. We are one of the, one of the only clubs in Dingley. Um, there is a few other clubs around local areas, but in terms of Dingley, we are the only cricket club around. Um, from there, we, we've, we've gone from having two teams, whereas right up to the moment we've got six senior teams and, and quite a few junior teams in our junior program as well. So 
A um, lot of history there. We're proud of where we've come from and where we're sitting today um, at the moment and our accomplishments. So, yeah, there's a lot of history there. I can't talk through absolutely everything, but there's plenty of stuff on our website about it. So, Awesome. Thanks, Casey. Um, and Casey, next question I would like to ask you. As you said that the club is here for quite a long time and I, I have heard that there's a lot of achievements as well. Um, would you like to talk about them? Yeah, so maybe I'll touch on, on last year's achievement. As I said, I've been president for, for two years, vice president the year before that. So when I came in as president, part of our uh, 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 sort of um, plan was to, to really focus on junior development and our junior program coming through to play senior cricket. So last year we ended up winning two flags. So our first 11 were successful in winning the Turf 2 Premiership in the DDCA. Um, and Turf 2 Reserves actually ended up winning the flag as well, which was a massive accomplishment to win ones and twos. It was the first time in history at Dingley Cricket Club that we've had our ones and twos win a premiership in the same year. So um, it is something that's pretty hard to do. So to accomplish that last year was a, a massive achievement for the club and first time in history. So great accomplishment. That's that's really a great history, I would say. Um, and also there are like a lot of uh, players playing in the local clubs who have the dream to play in the Australian cricket team, obviously. Yep. Um, how the local clubs assist those players to chase up their dream or want to be there where they want to be? Yeah, look, p part of our role in, in working the committee at the Dinger Cricket Club is making sure that we've got the right support for the junior players coming through. Um, and that's not only juniors, but that's senior level as well. So without the right support when it comes to coaching, um, facilities is a big part of that as well. So I, I've played at a lot of clubs that don't have bowling machines. Um, if you don't have the right facilities, you can't expect a, a local cricketer to improve their cricket as well. So it's all good and well going to the nets and, and facing bowlers. Uh, the one, number one thing, if you look at the Australian cricket team, you look at the professional cricketers that play out there, all they do is hit balls five hours a day, four hours a day, so um, and plenty of balls a week. So part, part of our role in the committee is making sure that we've got the funding to be able to provide that support for the playing group um, at junior level and senior level. So we do put a lot of focus and, and money into our coaching facilities and making sure we've got that right support. The biggest thing is support. If you haven't got the support, then you, you can't expect your your, your players to develop at a local level. So, And we know that one of your um, club player has actually played the Australian cricket team as well. Talk about them. Yeah, so that, that's a fantastic um, story for the Dingley Cricket Club. We had a, a young cricketer that um, started at Dingley Cricket Club, John Holland. So John Holland played junior cricket here at Dingley. Um, from there, worked his way through into senior cricket. Um, had a fantastic year in the seasons, or quite a few years in the se in, with the seniors here at Dingley. Um, from there, actually went through to play state level um, and played for Australia in 2016. So, um, to say that we've actually bred one of one of the Australian cricket players, it's it's great to say we can say John Holland came from from Dingley Cricket Club, and it's great to see he still comes down to the club. We still see him around, and he's well respected here. So um, yeah, definitely great to have someone come through the ranks at Dingley to make it all the way to the Australian cricket team. And Casey, can you please tell us, um, you were talking about your junior players, but what are you also doing to incorporate new teams for female players yep. and teams like that? Yeah, so we've put a lot of time and focus into developing our, our girls and women's program. So part of that is, is again, comes back to the coaching and, and the staff that you've got to be able to support the girls' cricket. So currently we've got an under-13 girls team playing, um, which are currently undefeated, actually, which is going pretty well. So um, Woolworths cricket is a big part of the junior program. So we've got plenty of girls out there now playing cricket. Years ago, there wasn't too many girls playing, but the big bash and, and the girls' cricket and the women's cricket taking off um, in the big bash and international as well has been a massive help to um, help local clubs get junior girls and women's cricket up and running. So um, currently, yeah, as I said, we've got one girls' team at the moment. We're hoping to grow that and we're working on trying to get a women's team up and running next year, which um, Hopefully we get the support that we need and we get the players down to, to get that up and running, which would be great. How does someone go about joining the club? If they want to join, how should they reach out to you and other members in the club to join? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all over social media. So we're on Facebook, Instagram. We've got our webpage. Um, we've currently got TeamApp as well. So we've just created a new online social media platform, which is um, a direct input into to Dingley. So, um, I mean, search any of those, search any of those 
social media pages, all our contact details are right all, right all over those. So um, yeah, just feel free to get in touch with anyone from the committee. We're more than happy to speak to anyone that, that wanted to come down and play some cricket. Um, doesn't matter what ability you've got, we've got um, senior cricket available from the highest grade down to the lowest grade. So, um, And then juniors as well, as I said, we've got juniors from age five all the way up to under 16 into senior cricket. So. If you've got anyone that wants to play cricket, more than welcome down at Dingley Cricket Club. It'll be great to have you part of the club and, yeah, just get in touch with anyone, any one of us on the committee. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Casey. No worries. Thanks, Peter. And I'm speaking with the president of the Dingley Cricket Club, Mr Casey... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, I unfortunately okay. suffered a... Let's start again. You I didn't know what I was going to say. I might have to start that again. <laughs> <laughs>